show up. Standing right by. Don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. Know that God. my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell though an host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear the war shall rise against me and this will I be confident one thing have I desired the Lord that will I seek after that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life behold the beauty of the Lord 
and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his temple, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle of joy. I will say, hey, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not up to the will of my enemies, for false witnesses have risen against me to breathe our cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. It's prayer time in the temple, and certainly we have so much to pray for today. We have sickness, we have bereaved families, and we got a whole world to pray for. Hallelujah. We have a new president to pray for. We have our families to pray for, our city. We just got a lot to pray for. So if you would like to come to the altar this morning, just to show a sign that you believe in the power of prayer and that you have petitions on the altar. Take your way this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, Elder Freed, I was going to ask you to come pray. Praise the Lord. I didn't say you had made your way down. So. <laughs> yes, sir. I know you just read, but that was in my heart. So, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would, would you mind just grabbing somebody by the hand today? Merciful, kind God, here we are again today, Lord. All of us, Lord, at your mercy. Lord, there's no other help but you. You know every case, every situation that here. There are some that will read in the heart, Lord, lost loved ones. Lord, that you already know about. Some that are sick, some way, but some not knowing what to do, Lord. But you are the answer. You alone are the cure, Lord, today. We need Lord like never before. And oh, God, we have a new president, Lord, that only you can help. We ask that you direct him, we pray, Lord. God, and keep his time that we pray, Lord, today. My God, and our parents that are standing here that have children, help us that you alone are the answer. They need you, Lord, in the ring of their children. Lord, we cast him before you today. You alone are the cure of all of our answers, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. Bless our pastor, Lord, we pray. Lord, is a compassed side. They need you, Lord, like never before. In guiding us and leading us, we are the sheep of your pastor, Lord. Now, Lord, today, here we are. Empty, Lord, in some cases, Lord. Fill our cups. Cause them to overflow, we pray today, Lord. In name of Jesus. And, oh, God, someone under the sound of a voice today, Lord, that knows who you are. Tap them in the heart, Lord, and know that it's you, Lord, that will cure to the ears of that problem today, Lord. We need you. Need you, Lord, today like never preach your heart today. Bless the preach word today, Lord. Every song that is another today, Lord. Every song that draws over our lips, we sing unto you today, Lord. I try to direct us. Bless them. Guide us today, we pray, Lord. Just saying. And those that are for reach today, the love with crying tears yet. Dry their tears today, we pray, Lord. In Jesus' name. You are the cure. You are the answer, Lord. Not us, but you are the cure. You are our answer, Lord. We give ourselves to you, Lord, today. We empty ourselves before you, Lord. After the empty picture, fill us today. Fill us today, Lord. Cure us. Heal us today, we pray. In his name, amen and amen. Glory. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. Brethren, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. The gospel choir is coming back to take us further in worship.
wonderful. How full of wonders is the name of the Lord. There is no name like the name of the Lord. His name is the only name that's full of wonders. Wonderful, the name of Jesus. Thank God, is a mighty tower. The name of Jesus is a shelter. Where y'all going, you leaving? We thank God for the service thus far and you that have gathered. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Because the Lord, he's my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. And he leaped beside the quiet stream And he restores my failing health And he helps me do what honors him the most That's why I'm safe That's why I'm safe That's why I'm safe I'm safe in his arms because the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. And he helps me do what honors him the most. Why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe. His arms when the storms when the storms in my life oh and the billows all oh, the billows they roll He'll give you everything you need. He'll let you rest in the meadow's grass. And he'll lead you beside the quiet stream. And he'll restore your failing health. And he'll help you do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. When the storms help him sing. When the storms are
Jesus will, oh, he will hide me, yes, he will, cause I'm saved. you are. Lean on Jesus. Trust in him with all your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Yes, he will. For so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And you're safe. Yes, you are. You're safe in Protecting me, shielding me, covering me. Right now, I'm glad, so glad, Woo. the Lord will hide me. I'm, I'm glad, he, he will hide. Right now, covering me, holding me, shielding me, loving me, lifting me, helping me, strengthening me, Jesus, 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 my Lord. My sword, my shield, my arm and all. With the storm that I've raging, can't seem to find no peace. I look to Jesus, he's there. Oh God. Oh God. The Lord does actually wrap you up sometimes. He insulates you. All kind of stuff being all around you and it doesn't get through the shield. It doesn't get through the covering. It doesn't get through the net. It doesn't get through the safety. The devil and all his hellhounds throwing all kind of at you, but you still stand. You're still able to wave your hand. You're still able to hold your head up. I'm glad. So glad. Woo. The Lord knows how. Oh. Sometimes the enemy throws everything at you but you're still safe, you're still safe. Tell somebody, I'm still safe, I'm still safe. <laughs> I might not have the best mind, but it's better than a mind I have before the Lord came. <laughs> I might not know everything, but I know enough to stay under the blood of Jesus. I know enough to let the Lord have his way. I know enough not to try this world by myself. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to make a declaration. I don't care how 2009 is starting out. 
I will have a most victorious, wonderful year in Jesus. Standing on the promise that Let's read some scripture. Oh God, I feel the presence of the Lord on this cold day. I know there's ice out there, but ain't no ice in my soul, no snow in my spirit. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11 reads on this wise. And he said, Go and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. <laughs> and a great and strong wind the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind after the wind and earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Isaiah 26, I'm sorry, 29 and 6 reads, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and noise, with strong and with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Matthew 27, 50 begins, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the city and appeared unto many. Now when the Syrian and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done they feared greatly saying truly this is the son of look at somebody this morning and say earthquake earthquake earthquake, earthquake. 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 hallelujah I was looking at the inauguration and I was listening to our president speak and there was a portion of it that went right into my spirit. I think I started speaking in tongues. And it wasn't about the man, it's about the plan that God had on in the world. What God is doing in the earth. Tell somebody God is moving in the earth. I want to quote from his speech. Now, there are some who question the scale of our ambition. He said, who suggests that our system tolerate too many big plans? You know, I heard that, and I thought about our church. Thought about people of God who question the ambition of those who still have dreams about God doing awesome, great, and wonderful things. Oh, hallelujah. He went on to say, their memories are short. And I thought about us again. How soon we forget how all God has been to us down through the years. How he has delivered us time after time. And even though we're faced with another challenge in our lives, in our families, or in our marriage, in our finances, in our church, hallelujah, so like they don't remember that we serve the almighty God whose hands are not short. 
You see, when you have a spiritual ear, you can hear from God no matter who preaching, no matter who teaching, no matter who talking. I didn't say you had to be deep. I said have a spiritual ear. Deep, that's just being a child of God because he said, my sheep know my voice. He went on to say, their memories are short for they have forgotten what this country has already done. They've forgotten what free men and women can achieve when imagination is joined with common, everybody say common, common purpose and necessity to courage. What the cynics fail to understand is that the ground have shifted beneath them. And he ended this part by saying that the stale political arguments that have consumed us for so long no longer apply. If I may break it home, what the doubters, what the naysayers, what the busybodies fail to understand is that the ground has shifted and that the stale church arguments that have consumed us for so long no longer apply. It ain't about that old drama. Earthquake. I said right then, I said, ooh, that'll preach. Yeah, yeah. When, when he was talking, I said, that'll preach. I thought about man, how we don't realize God has changed things that we're standing on and thinking it's all that. And I ain't talking about doctrine and nothing like that. I'm, I'm talking about some of our ideologies and mores and feudalisms. There comes a time when God shifts from what we are dealing with and spending all our time on and we have to be man and woman enough in God to move on with our lives and move on with the business at hand. Earthquake. I said, oh my God. I began to think about earth in the Bible. The first, I don't know if the first chronologically, but one of the first ones that come to mind was, and he didn't always call them earthquakes, Brother Rob. One of the first ones that came was when God divided the land. During the Tower of Babel, you, you see the planet, and if you would look at a map now, you can see how South America would slide right under North America. It used to be all land mass. But man got so high and mighty and wanted to be like God that God moved the earth apart. Hallelujah. When you think you're all that, hallelujah, without God can separate the very ground not from under you. Oh, my God. And then I said, yes. But one of the main ones, and I won't even read the scriptures today. I'm going to go back to some of them. But let me just talk a moment about a shift. Anybody here knows a shift is going on? There was a spiritual shift going on. There was a climate shift going on in the world. There was a political shift going on in the world. If you look at the structure of our society, there is a shift even in the society. Now, whether or not you want to believe it, it's really getting ready for the end time. It's really getting ready for the son of perdition. But not only on the negative is it getting ready, it's also getting ready for the catching away of the things. Moses was having some problem with some of the folk in his church. And he said to him, well, you ain't one God talking to. 
I is just as spiritual as you, said Nathan and Dothan. And they carried on so bad, Ricky, that most fall on his face. You know, folk can grieve you if you let them. It doesn't matter because we're all on different levels. And you, you, you can be doing your best, Angel, and somebody going to find fault with you. You, you ain't got to be about no drama, but folk with drama trying to drama to you. And unless you know how to process drama, you'll be dramatized. Anybody beside me ever been dramatized? It is so aggravating to get dramatized when you're on the mountain. When everything's going right, you know, you, you don't call yourself dotting all your T's and crossing all your I's. And for once in your life, you might ready to skip. And here come a drama queen or a drama king or a drama prince or a drama duchess. Hallelujah. Trying to cause an earthquake up in your life. I got to call. Just been busy. We, we us go talk. We go talk. Moses got so tired of drama, Mother Hill. He said, I tell you what, if you don't think God called me, hallelujah. If you don't think I have been a nurtured, if you don't think I've been a pointed, if you don't think I am the man, I want God to do something to you that is out of the ordinary. He said, if, if you just die like ordinary folk, then I'm not the one, Erica. He said, will open up his mouth and swallow you and your mama and your grandmama and your children and your oxes and your asses and your sheep and your chickenses. He said, Maria, he said that the earth opened up and swallow up everything about you. Then will you believe that maybe I'm with Why does it take God to have to kill some folk to get their attention? Why does it take Marcella for all kind of bad stuff? Now, I tell you, I got plenty of beatings as a children, a child, as a child. I was big enough to be a children, but I was a child, hallelujah. I got beat. I got beat with stove, wood, shoes, belts, and there was no child abuse. If you told anybody in your family, then they would beat you again. I learned that if I was doing certain things, I was going to keep getting beat. So there wasn't no need of me since I didn't want to get beat. Now, the last time I got beat, it really wasn't my fault. Well, it, it wasn't all of my fault. <laughs> that we're about to get it from. <laughs> my cousin went home with me one day. This teacher sent us from school to get some newspaper. They were going to do paper mache. Anybody remember paper mache? Y'all young folk need an art. And we were going to make some rabbits for Easter, you know. Get that cornstarch and make that paper mache. And we went home, I didn't live too far from the school, and my mother had some brine cheese in the refrigerator. I love cheese. And she told me, Belle, don't you eat my cheese. And my mother taught at the same school that I went to, so I went home and I just happened to open the refrigerator. I'm sorry, the Kelvinator. The ice box. And that cheese called my name. I heard it. <laughs> and I just took, you, you know, you can cut cheese in a way that you really can't tell it. I mean, once it's been cut, you, you understand. So I fixed that cheese so it would not be detected. And I told my cousin while I was getting the newspaper out of the top of the bathroom closet, that's where you put all the old papers. I said, you can have a little piece of cheese. 
You don't tell folk to have a little piece of nothing. That boy ate so much cheese, and I didn't know he had done it. See, that's the thing about quail. Sometimes it starts and you don't even know it's happening. That's what's called an epicenter. That's where it starts, but sometimes by the time it gets to you, it's already picked up momentum. You don't even know how to get ready for it. He started an earthquake in my life when he ate all that cheese, and the earthquake went on all day long till I got home from school. And when I opened the door, my mother grass snatched me in the house, and the earth moved under my feet. kept saying, but I didn't eat but a little bit. She said, you're lying, boy. Look at my cheese. I told you to leave my, and I looked at the cheese, and it was all humped up. <laughs> Folk will cause an earthquake in your life and leave you to suffer with the damages. Earthquake. Several times in the scripture, God used earthquakes to shake up the nation of Israel. They were so profound that they are referred to in scripture as the time before the earthquake and the time after the earthquake. It was a benchmark of what God did. Not only the one on, 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 on my karma, on my hope here with, with, with the, uh, the prophet where he was up there and, and God wasn't in the earthquake. But during the time of King Uzziah, during the time of Isaiah, the folk were acting so bad. God sent an earthquake that rocked the very foundation of Israel. It was so powerful that again, it was known as the time of the earthquake, the time before the earthquake, and the time after the earthquake. So powerful that when to talk about the day of the Lord and, and, and the end time, he says, and it will be as the time of Isaiah. Hallelujah. Where the people fled, where the people ran. A shot is on the horizon. Those who have an ear are hearing Spirit is saying to the church, those who have sensitivity are feeling the tremors. I, I believe the Heritage Choir is supposed to sing for Elder Prather too. Uh, uh, Vicki had mentioned that to me, and I'll find out definitely. The mother, I'll find out. She had mentioned it much. Okay. In 1812, there was a war, the War of 1812, some French and Indian War. But there was something that happened in this country greater than the War of 1812. Between Memphis and St. Louis, the Numadric Fault. The Numadric Fault is greater than the faults in California. The earthquake was so powerful, and there were several of them between 1811 and 1812, that it rang bells in churches in Boston. It was so powerful that the Mississippi River started running backwards. It caused lakes that are still there. That's why that area is the way there are sand pools or sand pumps where the sand liquefied under the, blew up through the crust and now there's just bowls of sand all over that area. If that pneumatic fault that we are on in Cincinnati ever starts acting up again the way it's been shaking, you, you, you see, when you have a fault line, a stone basin and sandstone, it's different from the coastline because it's on the coast, those earthquakes are bad. But because the sand is so, it, it, it's, it's the soil is sand, it doesn't travel so much. But we're in an area hallelujah, where the ground is hard, and you know that sound and movement travels more through a hard surface than a soft surface. 
earthquake. The Bible said that when Jesus died, the earth began to quake. Hallelujah. The earth began to open up to leave the blood, hallelujah, that would cause us to be able to have eternal life. Huh? When, when the blood went down in the earth, hallelujah, the earth could not deal with the of that purity. It could not deal with the fact that all the blood that had been shed for all the years through all of the murder, all of the sin, all the vice that had been thrown down in the earth, hallelujah, it had been accustomed to all of that nasty, all of that low down, all of that filth, and now all of a sudden the king of glory blood drops in the earth. The earth couldn't take it. What is it going to take to shake you up? What is it going to take to cause us to change? What is it going to take to make us stop playing games with each other? There are bigger fish to fry. What is it going to take? For us to get on one accord for the kingdom. What is it going to take? Sister Anna, I ain't never been your enemy. Even if I don't agree with everything you do, I'm not your enemy. I just have an opinion, just like you. Everything, Reggie, is not for warfare. Sometimes we just need to have a little chat and get on. Because most times it ain't about nothing, nothing much, no how. It even lets something more serious happen. And you forgot what you were even mad about. Bishop told me last week he was going to come. I think he told me last Saturday, a week ago or last Friday. He said, well, he asked me why I was going to be in town this weekend. And I said, yes. He said, well, preacher, I'm going to be so, you know, I started studying. And then because he changed his mind. I'm not going to California because he got sick, so then I, I stopped studying. And then he called me that night and said, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> if I hadn't been studying about earthquake, I might have had a little earthquake last night, praise God, because I was tired. Bottom line is this. The Bible said that Jesus was in the tomb on the third day. And there was a great earthquake. And the great earthquake Roll the stone away. See, you can decide what your earth is going to do for you. Whether it's going to set you free, open up your grave, or cause you to be swallowed up. Pit. Ha! Paul and Silas was in the Philippian jail. At midnight, the Bible says, and they began to sing praises to the Lord. Shanae. They began to worship God in jail. And the Bible says it was a great earthquake. And it shook so hard that chains and shackles fell off. And, and even though they were in jail, God sent an earthquake to set them free. Hallelujah. There's an earthquake in the house this morning. There's an earthquake at 1150 Gilbert Road this morning. There's an earthquake on your pew this morning. It can roll your storm away. It can knock your shadow. Maybe it can swallow you whole. Hallelujah. You got to decide how the earthquake's going to affect you. You got to decide whether you're going to be set free or go down to the pit. You got to decide you're going to realize there's a shift. Yes, sir. 
Y'all know, I always be having y'all do something. I ain't passing out no more papers because they got confused with folking. I got in trouble for passing out papers almost. <laughs> but if you know, there's a shift, Jonathan. If you know there is a shift going on, hallelujah. 